Hey guys, I want to give you a review on my reverse osmosis system. I bought it for my condo, which I rent, and I was, it was really important to find something that was easy to install and easy to take down when I moved. Okay, so first of all, I'll go ahead and test the difference between tap water and what this thing can produce. Um, I actually have two cups of water. This is from the reverse osmosis system. As you can see, the total parts per million is only around 38. And tap water, the tap water is around 590 parts per million. The reason why I absolutely love uh, filtered water and I try to avoid tap water at all costs is because of what is in tap water. The Environmental Protection Agency, actually they release what's called a CCL. It, it stands for Contaminant Candidate List, and it's a list of 116 substances found in drinking water. I'll include the list down below. I'll just go over a couple of them now. Um, formaldehyde, uh, nitrobenzene, which is used in explosive part of, uh, pesticides and drugs, uh, nitroglycerin, progesteronic hormone used in pharmaceuticals, you know, it's probably uh, birth control. Multiple chemicals that I can't really pronounce but are used in insecticides, herbicides, and fungicides, and waterborne pathogens. There's so much stuff that you don't want to be drinking in tap water, and that's why this major uh, filtration system is so important to me. You know, the ones that you see at the store like Brita, they just have one little tiny carbon filter that really doesn't do that much. This system is only around $170. It's a, you know, it's a great price considering it comes with the filters that'll last you at least six months. Uh, replacement filters are only $35 for the entire year on this thing. Maintaining the system is very affordable and extremely easy. They give you all the tools that you need. Now I'll get into the filter itself. Um, the first one is the sediment filter. It removes uh, items at five microns. It basically takes out your bigger particles. And the second stage right here is the granular carbon, which gets rid of unpleasant tastes, chlorine, odors, cloudiness, and colors that are in the water. The fourth, or I'm sorry, the third stage is a carbon block, which removes any residual chlorine, uh, difficult to remove chemicals such as chloramines. And then the fourth stage of your system, which is this block up here, is the reverse osmosis membrane. It only lets water through at 0 0.0001 microns. Um, this is really the heart of the RO system, and it produces uh, drinking water at about 75 gallons per day. And then the fifth stage is your post-carbon filter, which gives your water a final polishing before you uh, go ahead and drink it. I, I don't own the condo, I rent it, so I had to install the spout underneath the sink, which is totally fine, because um, I just fill up this gallon jug, put it in my refrigerator, and I'm good to go for the day. And at the end of the video, you guys, I will include the installation instructions and show, it shows how easy this system is to install. Now, if you guys like this system, I put a link in the video description below to Amazon. It's only around $170. I highly recommend it. It's a great system and it's been really good. It hasn't leaked at all. Uh, some people in the reviews, they say it's leaked. I don't think it's because of the system. I think it's just because they hooked it up incorrectly. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you. In this video, we will show you step-by-step -step how to install your new system. Initial steps. Carefully read through your user's manual provided with your system. Lay out all the components and make sure to check off each item. You will also need some household tools in order to complete this installation. Installing pre-filters. Remove the protective wrap from each filter before installing. Make sure the O-ring is seated in the top of the housing. Install the filter in the housing and then carefully screw the housing onto the filtration system. Installing filter elements vertically will help keep them aligned correctly in the filter housing. Repeat the process for the two remaining filter elements, making sure to match them to the correct location.
tighten each filter housing using the supplied wrench. Installing Membrane Remove the membrane from the protective wrap. Remove the black caps from both ends of the membrane. Install the membrane into the housing. The end with the two black o-rings goes in first. Make sure the membrane is pressed firmly into the housing. Install the cap and tubing. Quick Connect Fittings Remove the tubing, first pull out the blue clip, then compress the fitting and pull out the tube. To install, insert the tubing and then install the locking clip. Cold Water Supply Valve Shut off the cold water supply valve to the sink. Open the cold water faucet to relieve any remaining pressure in the system. Old style valve. Put about three turns of Teflon tape onto the shutoff valve. Install the shutoff valve into the cold water adapter. Loosen the cold water flex line at the faucet and install the adapter. Reinstall the cold water flex line onto the adapter and tighten. Remove the nut from the stop valve and slip it over the red tubing. Then insert the red tubing onto the valve and tighten the nut. John Guest Angle Stop Valve Remove the cold water flex line and install the valve. Reinstall the cold water flex line onto the valve and tighten. Insert the red tubing into the adapter. Dispensing Faucet Use an existing hole or drill a new half inch hole in the desired location. Remove the protective wrap from the chrome plate and install the chrome plate and washer onto the faucet. Install the faucet into the hole. The following steps will take place under the sink, but they are shown on the countertop for clarity. Under the sink, install the back plate, the lock washer, and the nut, and tighten. Place the nut over the blue tubing, place the collar over the tubing, and push the insert into the tubing. Install the blue tubing onto the faucet and tighten the nut. Tank shutoff valve. Put about six turns of Teflon tape onto the tank fitting. Install the shutoff valve and tighten by hand. Insert the yellow tubing into the tank shutoff valve. Drain saddle. The drain saddle may be installed on the horizontal cross pipe or on the vertical drain pipe. 
drill a one quarter inch hole in the desired location. Install the sticky foam pad around the hole. Align the drain saddle with the hole using a drill bit or narrow screwdriver. Install the back plate. Install the nuts. And tighten with a screwdriver. Remove the tool used for aligning the saddle. Slip the black nut over the black tubing and insert the tubing into the drain saddle and tighten the nut. Tubing hookup. Insert the blue tubing into the pH balance filter port and install the locking clip. Insert the yellow tubing into the post carbon filter port and install the locking clip. Insert the black tubing into the auto flush valve and install the locking clip. Insert the red tubing into the sediment filter and install the locking clip. System Startup Turn off the tank valve so the handle is perpendicular to the hose. Turn on the reverse osmosis faucet. In systems with manual flush valves, open the flush valve. Turn on the cold water supply. Turn on the reverse osmosis supply valve and check the system for leaks. After 5 minutes, water should start to dribble from the faucet. Wait 10 more minutes and then turn on the tank valve. Turn off the manual flush valve if installed. Shut off the reverse osmosis faucet and allow the system to fill for 2 hours. After 2 hours, open the reverse osmosis faucet until the tank is completely drained. Close the faucet and allow the system to fill. After the tank refills, the system is ready to use. Ice Maker Kit Wrap the threads of the T-fitting with about 6 wraps of Teflon tape. Install the shutoff valve onto the T-fitting and tighten by hand. Remove the blue tubing from the pH balance filter. Cut a short piece of white tubing and install it into the pH filter fitting. Install the newly assembled valve onto the short hose. Insert the blue tubing into the T-fitting. Insert the white ice maker tubing into the shutoff valve. At the back of the fridge, install the coupling onto the white tubing. Next, insert the ice maker tubing into the other end of the coupling. Turn on the ice maker valve to complete the installation. Changing filters. Turn off the cold water supply valve. Turn on the faucet and drain the tank. And turn off the tank valve. Using the supplied wrench, loosen and remove the filter housing. Be prepared for some water spillage.
Remove the old filter cartridge and discard. You may want to clean the filter housing with soap and water and rinse thoroughly. Some Vaseline may be used to lubricate the o-ring. Install the new filter into the housing. Reinstall the housing and tighten with a wrench. Repeat this process for the other two pre-filters. For either the post carbon filter or the pH balance filter, first remove the tubing, then unscrew the fittings and install them onto the new filter. You may need to add a few wraps of Teflon tape to the threads. Install the new filter into the holder clips and reinstall the tubing. For the RO membrane, remove the tubing from the cap. Lift the housing from the U clips and remove the cap. You may need pliers to remove the old membrane. Install the new membrane into the filter housing. The two black o-rings go in first. They may be lubricated with Vaseline. Make sure you press the RO membrane in firmly. Reinstall the cap and reinstall the tubing. Turn on the cold water supply and open the tank valve. Allow the tank to fill for two to three hours and then drain the first tank before using the system.